in Illinois a few days ago, and there's been more police shootings since then. In Boston, a police car got shot up and blew up. And there's more calls for police to be killed. And these people sitting around calling for folks to be killed have never really killed anybody, I don't think. It's one thing to go out and kill somebody. That's bad enough to just sit around. Yeah, kill police. Go and shoot them. I mean, it's just calling for premeditated, cold-blooded murder of people you don't even know by a bunch of wimps. I guarantee you that have never killed anybody. It shows people that are disconnected from reality. It's like the ultimate example of people that will send you threatening emails. Studies show, but they won't do it in person. They'll send you really rude, hateful emails in person. People you know. But in person, they won't do it. Something about the Internet, something about giving a speech that people don't get, that it's actually having an effect. But police charged a woman for false report and cop killer manhunt. Biggs was there when this all went down. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to get into Europe's borders continuing to collapse by design. Report on Infowars.com. Trump to sign GOP pledge precluding a third-party run. Refugees from U.S. Saudi-sponsored Syrian war flood into Europe. Neutron bombs used in Yemen, question mark. The shocking video that Rob Dew got off Spanish television, off Mexican TV. Young girls convulse on the floor after HPV shot. News on the economy we're going to be breaking down. And the economics of Bernie Sanders. That's some of the news in the featured news area of Infowars.com. We've got a report out, I see on Drudge. Hacker threatens to sell Hillary's entire unreleased private emails for $500,000. FBI scouring server for evidence of spying. Aid expected to plead fifth before House panel. So now Hillary's people are pleading the fifth. They're getting ready to. Crowley, Clinton's plan to counterattack Obama. See, now it's basically admitted that there's a fight between the Clintons and Obama over who will control the next dynasty. There's a flashback about how Julian Assange will be Hillary's worst nightmare in 2016. Another report, Budapest on the brink. That's Hungary. We won't be taken to the camps as hundreds of thousands of illegals pour in some of the Eastern European countries that don't have any money and are already collapsing are like, look, we're bussing you out. We're taking you out. We're getting rid of you. And they're like, no, we will, we, we're going to stay. Shocking moment. Desperate father throws himself, his wife, and baby onto rail tracks in Hungary after releasing their train to Austria is actually taking them to a refugee camp. And there is video of that, again, that we can play for the TV viewers, but radio listeners can simply go to Infowars.com or DrudgeReport.com and see it. But the woman, Muslim woman, uh, with her husband and the baby, throwing themselves on the railroad tracks uh, rather than being sent back to their country. And then we have ISIS and Al-Qaeda forces funded by the West ravaging these Muslim countries, destabilizing them, so they then flood into our nations. But you'll never be shown these images of what's happening in the countries they're fleeing. No, no, no. It's just once they get here to elicit a response of feeling sorry for them. But this is what's going on. And there's six plus billion people that want to come here. There are six plus billion people of the seven and a half billion, really it's more than six billion, that want to come in here. And I mean, it'd be one thing if the hardworking ones, the uh, ones that had skills came here and there wasn't welfare, but it, I mean, we're already bankrupt. This is game over. This is the political takeover. And we want to know why they have political correctness where you can't criticize radical Islam under their model. It's because they plan. I never used to believe this when I heard folks talk about it at World Net Daily or Glenn Beck. But I've actually got to say, they've been proven right, or Jerome Corsi, there really is a plan to bring in intolerant groups and then force us to accept their way of life 
under political correctness while we lose our freedom of speech. There's a billion plus Muslims and the plans to radicalize them and bring them in. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday, the third day of September 2015 worldwide broadcast. Joe Biggs is going to pop in from Fox Lake, Illinois, the side of the police officer that was killed a few days ago. He ran around with the police during their manhunt last night. Uh, he reported to us uh, last night. Now it's in the news today, USA Today. Police charge woman for false report in cop killer manhunt. And he witnessed uh, that last night. We've got a bunch of HD footage he sent us that we're going to be premiering. It's very interesting. The nightly news tonight of uh, him running around in fields pretty much with the police with flashlights. And again, this is simply embedding himself in the middle of it when the rest of the press just sat back waiting for press conferences uh, to actually see what was happening. Just a snapshot of what's happening in America. But we're going to your phone calls here in just a few minutes. Taylor, Neil, Otter, Cash, Wild, and others. Uh, go ahead uh, now, and we're going to flip uh, over to video Skype on the ground with Joe Biggs reporting for InfoWars.com. Joe, what have you witnessed so far since we talked to you yesterday? Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now I'm standing outside of the Fox Lake uh, Police Department yet again, uh, day two. Last night, or yesterday I should say, I got a few tips that police were going door to door again throughout the neighborhoods, right across from where the police officer was shot and killed. Now, earlier yesterday morning, the police came out and said that they had suspended the search in this area, but then they started following up on leads that they were getting through social media, which brought them back to the neighborhood across through there. And I had the opportunity to go through, take some pictures and video of these guys going door to door. Now, these guys weren't dressed up in regular cop gear. These guys had on you know, bulletproof vests, Uzis, assault rifles, uh, shotguns, everything you could think of. And they said, hey, we're going door to door. We're looking for a suspected cop killer. We have to treat each home like there could be a violent person in there. So these guys were going around doing that. And during that time, uh, there was a vigil that was going on as well for the police officer, which had a lot of folks distracted. A lot of people were gone. There was about a thousand people who showed up for Lieutenant uh, Glenovich's uh, vigil that was going on. So I had the opportunity to walk up and down the street without a lot of traffic and watch these guys as they went from house to house, following leads and, you know, whatever you have you with that. During that time, a lady came out from her house with a cell phone and said that a friend of hers called her that works at the Dollar General. Joe, Joe, your Skype's breaking up. Wait a minute till it gets better and then... Go back about 10 seconds. A lady came out of her house with a cell phone. Please continue. Yes, the lady came out of her house with a cell phone, and uh, a friend of hers had called who worked at the Dollar General, which is not too far up the road from where we were at, about a five-minute drive. And the lady said that two girls had walked into the store and were bragging about who had killed the cops. They knew who it was. So she handed the phone over to the U.S. Marshals, the marshals talked to that lady at the Dollar General, and they had a further walk. They took their time. They had a, a good you know, quarter of a mile walk to get back to their vehicle. My vehicle was only 100 yards away. So I talked to the lady. I said, hey, what, what information did you just tell the marshals? She says, yeah, my friend's working up here at the store. Uh, some girls came in bragging that they knew who uh, you know, killed the cops. So I jumped in my vehicle and beat feet over there and got there before the police did. And when I walked up, the lady goes, she just seemed freaked out. I said, hey. Did you just call someone and say that you saw someone talking about uh, who killed the cop? And she flipped out. She says, I can't talk to you. The U.S. Marshals told me not to talk to anybody. So at that point in time, that's when things started to heat up because the marshals pulled up. They started talking. And then that's when you started seeing more police presence coming out. Then a few hours later, you get this bogus call coming in. It's about 9.20 p.m. last night. This lady calls in, says that she was driving down the road. Her car had broke down. And uh, she was on the side of the road. Two guys approached her asking if they could get a ride into Milwaukee. And uh, she said by her story is that they ran because they were scared that she was going to call the cops on them. And she gave the description of what the police were looking for. We know that there's two white male suspects on the loose and a black male. She said that there was a white male and a black male that tried to essentially rob her and uh, take her car. So this began an all-night manhunt. I stayed up for 24 hours straight yesterday. I haven't eaten. And quite honestly, I'm pissed. I hope they throw this woman under the jail because if the suspects weren't out of town and they were in Fox Lake yesterday, 
guess what? They're sure as hell going to be gone now because all they had to do was turn on the TV and see all the helicopters flying overhead, the, the airplanes, hundreds, you know, not, if not even maybe one or 2,000 police officers running around up and down the streets through cornfields, which I was involved in. I'm going through cornfields looking around. I'm not scared to go out there. So we're out there running around looking for this because we thought this was a credible threat. And the next thing you know, you start getting uh, people are calling in saying, hey, there's suspicious people walking through our yards, this and that. So next thing you know, there was this wild goose chase going on all night and till about two, three o'clock in the morning. And it was all because a lady lied because she wanted attention. She was a nanny and she was looking for attention from a family that she was working for. And essentially threw the entire thing away now because of a lie. Well, she's going to get attention now. I mean, I've never seen one of these cross burnings. Uh, in modern times where it wasn't people doing it for attention. I mean, there's been some real uh, Nazi murders and Klan murders, but but not really cross burnings in yards. Uh, every Jewish center we've seen, uh, without exception, with the swastikas put on it, has been fake. Uh, every time a dorm gets a swastika put on it, it's been fake. I mean, it's almost always, I think there's been a few real ones total, it's almost always a false flag. And uh, same way, women that claim three black guys rape them and you know, carve stuff on their face. Turns out that's a lie. Uh, or a black lady claims white people raped them. That's a lie. There is a penchant in criminology, just like men commit most murders. Women commit most of the making stuff up to get attention. It's just bizarre. They'll claim they're raped all the time. And that's why I so mean, many times the police don't believe a woman when she claims that they've been raped if there isn't hardcore evidence because so many women lie and say they've been raped. I mean, I just don't get the psychology of claiming that, you know, you get carjacked or you get attacked if you didn't, Joe. At the, at the end of the day, this is just so sad, especially for this community. There was a thousand people who showed up to this police officer's vigil. That's a lot of people. I hope that many people show up if I die to something. You know, that's amazing to show you that the community really liked this person. You know, we hear about a lot of bad police officers, but this was a good police officer. I mean, there were people that have known to have been scumbags in this town who showed up. People respected this guy and showed up for him. And this lady threw it all away. She disrespected the community. She screwed up the entire manhunt. Because like I said, all these guys would have had to have done last night was turn on the TV and see that these guys were south. And they could have just walked out of here free because there was no cops up here. They were all down here. And all the news was up here at the police station about 15 minutes away or 10 minutes away from where everything was going on. Yeah, lying woman blows manhunt. Joe Biggs, I'm going to go to calls. Great job. Um, are you planning to come home today or tomorrow? Yeah, today. All right. Well, anything else you want to add about what you've seen, what you've taken away from this? Well, I, I do find it's very interesting the fact that the police said that they were going to come at this uh, armed door-to-door -door and treat every home they go to like there is, uh, you know, some armed suspect, especially when we have rights. I mean... You're innocent until proven guilty. So I think that's a little messed up, but that's the message that they put out. That they're going to go around armed like every home they go to is a potentially a violent situation. Well, if these guys are hiding there, that's certainly the case. But there's always bad guys hiding somewhere. So absolutely, it's an escalation of the threat continuum and basically turning everyone into suspects in a police state, which is going to sow distrust uh, and only cause the war between the people and the police uh, to accelerate. Uh, Joe Biggs, great job. We'll see you back here tomorrow uh, in studio to break things down. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, Alex. You bet. Thank you. Great job going up there. Now, we're going to go to your phone calls, and then coming up, speaking of that, there is a dead police officer memorial just about a mile away from where the deputy was executed last Friday in the uh, county where Houston's based, Harris County. And folks have been egging that uh, and there's been more calls on radio and TV to kill police. I mean, this is insane asylum level. And it's only being allowed by the White House to start a civil war. And I know I keep repeating that, but I've been saying it the last few years, every day. Now it's clear it's happening. We're trying to stop it. This thing has basically been on slow burn. Now the fuse is burning very, very fast. And for all intents and purposes, this stuff has already begun. If it goes one level higher of escalation, it's going to chain reaction. We are right on the verge of hundreds of police getting killed. And then the police are just going to go completely crazy. They're going to stop responding to regular crime as they've done in Baltimore and other areas. And then crime is just going to explode. Especially in the areas where people are disarmed. But even in areas where we have guns, crime is going to go up. 
right as the economy falls apart and you can just see 